Well, good day, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I thought I'd just go over the basic operation of the sawmill, not to try and teach you uh, to be a sawyer, but simply to give those who may be interested in getting a mill uh, what the process is and how you go about it. Uh, the most difficult process really to overcome and uh, we have a clip is how to get a, a fairly large log onto your mill. Uh, there's tractors with grapples, you know, there's all kinds of ways of doing it. But that's the first thing that you have to figure out how you're going to overcome that. What size material are you going to be milling? And how are you going to get a log of that size onto? Now, if you're at ground level, obviously the height becomes less of an obstacle. Uh, when you're up in a trailer like this, uh, you know, you either really need to work on your muscle. <laughs> really and work on your you muscle. You can use ramps and cant hooks. And, but all I'm saying is you really need to look at that. And, because if you can't get a log on your mill, guess what? You just wasted your money, you know. Well, then you got to just go buy another toy. Well, of course. But that's what I'm saying is you got to be prepared to solve these problems. So, after you get the log on, uh, you need to get it positioned. And you've got to get it against its... Uh, yeah! Nope, I may need the actual camp hook. Hang on one moment. So this is a big old half-rotted cedar that Michael wants to saw up for a project that he's got in mind. This is the upper end. I think it's even worse on the lower end. So I'm not sure how much usable wood he's going to get out of this. So step two is you need a tool somehow to move, move these critters to their desired position on the mill. Then uh, need to, I don't know if they call them the log dogs, the, the posts that will keep the log in place while we're milling. The uh, log stops, I guess, maybe, proper term, whatever. They're also the things that they put there so that you can run your blade into them if you're not, <laughs> if you're if you're not, not watching. careful. <laughs> I don't suppose you know anybody's ever done that. Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do, I do. Oh, geez, this thing is heavy. A lot heavier than you would anticipate when yeah, it's half it rotted. <laughs> Maybe I'm just weaker than I anticipate. Now, the, one of the things we have to uh, protect against here is uh, there's a lot of flare on that. On the far end. On the far end. So what will happen if we don't... Uh, If, if we don't deal with that, is, is the mill won't be able to cut past a certain point. So, so this part of the blade is not movable. And this is to protect the blade because it will hit any resistance that's... So like if you leave a stop. post... Up, it's supposed to. Okay. Except way back in my... I thought... That's crooked. Why is it on a slant like this? So I straightened it. 
And then I probably ran. <laughs> it's because this is the spot where we'll hit the... It needs to be on an angle. The, the, okay, so if this log has flare, and we're going to be okay with this, I was wrong. My, my log stop had dropped down. I didn't secure it well enough. And... Uh, uh, so are you saying this doesn't have enough flare to be a problem? I don't think so. Okay. No. But anything that sticks out like a like a, a, a branch that hasn't been cut off close, that can that will stop the saw from from getting past that point. Okay, I see what you mean. Uh, now these do have a nice feature. So, for instance, if I have something like that, I can turn it this way, uh, and that pushes the log. So it's got some adjustability to it. Another inch plus in the right direction. So you can kind of compensate for some flare, but not a huge amount. Right. This. This uh, sawmill does have what's called a log leveler. Many people think that, you know, you have a small end and you have a big end. I would say with this log, there's probably close to a six inch difference between the diameter at the large end versus the small end. A log leveler helps you cut closer to the center of the grain of the tree. I've seen many people who look professional who seem to totally ignore that and there are certainly others who fuss and measure to try and get it bang on the center and you fall somewhere in the middle yeah yeah like most things <laughs> anyhow this log leveler is strictly manual and Okay, that's maximum height that it will swear up about four inches on this end. Okay, once you do that, uh, you now need to lock your log into position. In reality, a log this size if it's fairly stable on the mill, you could probably ignore that. The force of the blade is mostly pushing the log out this way. It's cutting through, and there's very little force pushing it down, down the trailer. But it's probably still a good idea to make sure you have it locked in place, right? trying to get me to conform to standard procedures, aren't you? <laughs> I'm trying to ensure that those watching are learning the right way, not the Mikey way. <laughs> well, then we know they're watching the wrong channel, aren't they? <laughs> right. Because <laughs> this is the Mikey way. <laughs> okay, so uh, the log is now secure uh, where we want it. Uh, the other thing, uh, of course, when you do this log leveling is uh, it works great for your first cut. If you turn the log 90 degrees, it will work well for that. Then after that, you have to drop it. Otherwise, you end up sawing crooked material. Right. Uh, so it's cautionary. So if you come to this part of the mill, uh, this is the width I can currently saw. That's not wide enough for the, the larger part of this log. So we need to adjust the width that we're sawing at. Okay. Ideally, if you were real finicky, you would adjust it for practically every cut until you get down to like a square can. Uh, generally, um, quite loose about that. <laughs> but you do have to have it wide enough to I'm get shocked. the blade through. <laughs> okay, so how do you adjust that? So, pretty simple. Loosen that. Pull this out to where I want it. Eyeball it. 
Jeez, I'm not sure. Ah. Yeah, I think I'm going to need... Yeah, we'll try. We'll try there. We can... This is something you can adjust with the, with the blade running. Well, you may want to stop the blade, but you can adjust this as you're going down the log if you find it's necessary. It's not perfect. Okay. So we're now basically set up and ready to start. Uh, to start the engine, it's just basically a matter of pushing on the choke. It's got a on start uh, key here. It, if I put it in the on position, It's got an electric winch that it uses to, to raise and lower the position of the blade. So it's down, up. As long as I have the key in the on position, I have access to that electric. So it doesn't need to be running. Right. Now the other thing that some people are real fussy about is uh, water. Uh, you have a, a water jug some say it's to clean the sap off the blade. Some say it's to keep the blade cool. I often ignore it and give her a start. Choke. Choke off. I will sometimes just cast it, especially when it's colder. Okay, the blade grabbed up fine, everything's nice and smooth, and now we're ready to go. Oh, ready to roll. regularly shut the mill down, uh, especially when I'm moving the log around or I need to stop and think. I generally have a no idle policy for most of my equipment, so that's part of it. what they call resaw material in that you can later come along saw off the live the edge, raw edges cut it down into a smaller board if you want uh, it's fairly labor intensive for what you're often getting out of it uh, out of this great big hunk of wood you might get one, a single one by six, which is better than the kick in the pan. Okay, so first we take off our log clamp. Oh, two, for this far. He's probably about 12 foot long, I would guess. Uh, to, to roll them, you want to make sure that your your stops are up fairly well. Otherwise, you can roll them right over the top of them. I think they're okay. Make sure you 
get them nice and perpendicular. And then clamp them. And clamp them. One will do. Now, I, I gotta remember that I'm still up on my uh, log lifter, centerer, whatever. And that's okay for this cut. It's okay for this cut, and then I gotta stop and drop it back down. So once you get an already sawn side down, you've got to take that off. Yes. Once we're on a flat side, we can drop the log stops because there's little tabs about half an inch high that the log can sit against. So then you eliminate the problem of cutting off your... Of running into those with your blade. Yes. <laughs> oh, and a third one. If you have dirt on your log, it's better, I probably should have positioned this a little different, what you want it is on the far side where the blade comes out. So instead of the blade going into the dirt and then pulling it all the way through the log, which is the most uh, damage to your blade, when it's on the outside, and the blade's going this way, it's just hitting it in and it's just throwing, throwing it off, it off with the air. With the sawdust, yep. Yeah. So, I think I'm just going to cut down far enough that I'll be below the dirt. The dirt. Break.
one thing about uh, logs with a lot of flare, if you take a cut like I just did, that uh, can be quite a heavy piece yeah, to move. Because that end is pretty hefty. Yeah. I think I'll take one more slice, bring it down to six inches in height, mm -hmm. and then turn the log and cut off six inch wide boards. And see how that goes. But I have to do it, I want to do them only half an inch thick, which will take a lot of thinking. Brain power. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Thank Anyhow, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, catch you in the next video, and uh, be safe and be kind. Take care. See ya. <laughs> catch you next time, guys.